Oh, yeah, I'm so excited about the game tonight. I got tickets to go watch him. These college kids are really good, but I don't know. I don't know if they're going to win against those Soviets and get some pucks in there. Well, tell you what. If they win tonight, I'm going to shave my hair and go bald. How's that? You don't believe me? All right. If they do win and I shave my head, I'm going to take a picture and fax it to you. These things are great. I can put a document in there, send it through the phone line, and the other person will get a copy of the document right away. I love my fax machine. I hate these fax machines. 1980s piece of crap. I can't believe people still use these darn things. Never works. <sighs> Hello, this is Ducks. Oh, my favorite customer, how are you? Yeah, I'm so sorry. I've been trying to send you those stock tips through the fax machine, but it just keeps choking. It just hangs and the paper gets stuck. What? Send it through electronic mail? Through electronic mail? Ah, that's a good idea. Okay, well, one second. Let me, let me get my laptop here. Uh, this is the latest model. My IT guys, boy, they sure do love me here. I'm gonna turn it on. This puppy is so fast. It's gonna be ready in three minutes. Two thousand years later. Welcome. Oh, it's up. It's up. Okay, okay. Let me let me start an electronic mail here. Two. Can you spell your electronic mail address? B I L L Bill G Bill G. At what's at? Oh, it's the A with a squirrely. Okay, Bill G at Microsoft period C O M. I just hit send. You've got mail. Hey, hey, uh, uh, sorry, Mr. Bill, I gotta go. I just received an electronic mail from a Nigerian prince. Looks like I'm gonna make a lot of money from this. Bye. What? All I need to send is a few thousand dollars and I'll get a million transferred to my bank account tomorrow? I am in. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, Steve, you know, I'm so stressed out. I can't believe he quit on me. I mean, I was just... Playing a prank, I sent a bunch of IRS guys to his house trying to audit him, and he freaked out. It was just a classic punk. And the worst part of all of this, he kept everything to himself. I don't know where the keys to the kingdom is. Is it on all the bunch of CDs he kept on his drawer in his office desk? Or is it in his My Documents folder? His email is the worst. It's gonna take years for my interns to comb through his email. I wish there was just one place where I could find all these things. That's what makes enterprise collaboration so, so hard. What? You use what? SharePoint? SharePoint? Huh. So you're telling me with SharePoint, you can put all corporate information in one place, people can access it, they can find it? Well, let me get that then. But wait, wait, wait. What if the server goes down? How can I have my plan B? Oh, you can back it up. With what? Ave point? I'm gonna get my IT guys on that. Well, buddy, thanks so much. I gotta roll though. I got five episodes of OC I need to catch up with on TiVo. Yammer, my company uses MySpace. Are you even friends with Tom? Well, that's why we're giving everyone in the office a Windows phone. What? Of course it doesn't come with Angry Birds. What are you talking about? And why would I want my employees chatting all day long using this thing called Skype? Are they kids in school passing notes talking about Charlie Sheen's tiger blood? A winning. Email is good enough for us. No, 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 no. We're not going to Office 365. We will stay on premises. Trust me, the cloud is a bigger flash in the pan than that actress from that Hunger Games movie. Microsoft Teams looks cool. But look, we cannot turn it on. You don't understand. Our admins will be mobbed with provision requests like they were in One Direction in the shopping mall. And now, please welcome Ducks. Look, welcome to the first annual Shift Happens Conference. 
If you're a modern workplace leader, you're in the right place. However, if you came here for the annual dermatology conference, I'm afraid that was last week. It was a good event, but you're kind of late. <laughs> Nevertheless, you're welcome to be with us in this next two days. You see, in the last couple months, my colleagues and I have spent a lot of time curating and putting together what we think is the most practical and actionable industry conference so it'll help you to figure out and address your journey throughout your digital transformation. In fact, in order to do this, we had to make sure we get the best minds, the brightest, the top leaders in this room right here, right now. And then certainly all of you, business leaders, IT leaders, across various types of organizations, from Fortune 500 companies like Merck, to forward-thinking government organizations like NARA and City of Richmond, you get to learn from them and see how they dealt with the messiness of the cloud. Now, what I want to do is also acknowledge, apart from your peers and colleagues, is we have top leaders from the industry that are here with us. We have top executives from Microsoft talking about what they're seeing in the industry, not only here, but around the world. We have MVPs, analysts, and leading media voices that are here, like Mary Jo Foley, Tony Redmond, who's written a lot and understands a lot on what Microsoft is doing around Office 365, and he'll share his words of wisdom as well. In short, putting together this event, we want to make sure we have the best recipe for your success in this journey. Now, uh, I want to take this time to tell you and talk about that nightmare I had this morning. And this nightmare was all these changes and shifts around technology. In fact, as you may know, it's nothing new. Change has been happening, shift has been going on throughout history. For example, you guys remember this company? So in case you don't know, Blockbuster, at its peak, in 1999, they went public and they raised $5 billion. That's a lot of money. And friends, around the same time, there's this guy named Reed Hastings. He was so fed up with Blockbuster because he kept paying late fees. Uh, you know, he didn't return his DVD on time, so he decided, I'm going to start a new kind of video rental company that I will stream video on the internet called Netflix. And when Blockbuster got wind of this, they're like, yeah, whatever. Who's going to watch videos on the internet? That's so stupid. And as you know, the business grew. Blockbuster at its peak had 9,000 stores in 2004. In fact, in 2007, their CFO decided that we're going to scale back on investing in online streaming. They did have online streaming, but they said, it's not worth it, that's gonna take that, we're gonna take that money and build more stores. And that's what they did. But we know what happened, right? In 2010, they were bankrupt. In 2013, there were no more. You see, the world is changing so fast, and this is nothing new to us. But what's new is the disruption and the pace is accelerating. And the reality of this, too, is not only it's affecting our personal lives, but it's affecting every type of business and organizations and government institutions out there. Do you know that only 89% of Fortune 500 companies, or, or I should say 11% of Fortune 500 companies, that was around back in the 50s, exist today? You see, friends, half a century ago, the shelf life of a company, the lifespan of a company, is typically about 75 years. But in recent reports, companies' average lifespan are only 15 years and vastly declining. As, as Jack Welch put it, if the rate of change in the outside exceeds the rate of change of the inside, then the end of your organization is near. What's happened, right? Well, we all know what's happening. Shift happens. And that's why we call this conference Shift Happens. 
Just make sure when you say it or when you type it, <laughs> do it carefully. Um, but what we want to do is we want to equip you to come out strong, to come out a winner during this shift. And what I want to do is kind of walk you through five quick ways as we get started on how to be a shift winner. And all of us in this room, I believe, that's why you're here, want to be winners. Right? So to be a shift winner, everyone here has to have a growth mindset. You see, shift losers almost always have fixed mindset. They, they hold the conventional wisdom of yesterday. So for example, show of hands here, how many of you just in the last two weeks in your organization have heard someone say, on-premises is more secure than the cloud? All right. And then how many of you in your organizations spend more money on securing your infrastructure than Microsoft is securing their infrastructure? Good for you. <laughs> but that's not the majority of it. You see, having a growth mindset as a shift winner, we're open to change. We want to adopt for what's best with our organization, and we want to embrace the current landscape. Tomorrow, for example, you'll hear from uh, an organization called the Oak Ridge National Laboratory. They're a US government agency, but the amazing story you learn from them is how they shifted and moved to the cloud. Now, if you think about it, Oak Ridge National Lab has a lot of research and scientific work and sensitive information. And that's the last type of organization you'll think of moving to the cloud. But they did it. They figured out a way on how to properly identify, classify, and secure data while they're in the cloud. Is it picture perfect? I'm sure it's not. But I encourage you to learn from Oak Ridge and see what they did to make it possible. So the next way to be a shift winner is you've got to be an innovator. And what that means is don't be like a shift loser where there's always turf war going on and preoccupied with ownership. This is my server. I own Exchange. I own AD. Oh, those are the SharePoint people. Well, that type of mindset works in on-premises and rightfully so. In the new world, certainly we still have expertise in those different areas, but we got to innovate and work together and figure out new ways to bring value to our organization. You see, Shift Winners realizes that competitive advantage is fleeting. Value depreciates from the moment of implementation. So our job as winners is we have to maximize our impact in our organization. And it, it, it's not about protecting what we have, but making the most of what's available so we can enable and empower our organizations. And this conference, the goal is to help you how to be innovators. This morning, you learned from my colleague, Mario Carvajal, and Microsoft US President for Regulated Industries, Tony Towns Whitley, as they talk about digital leadership and how leaders of today should consider and think about moving your organization forward with the power of technology. We'll also hear from renowned industry analyst, Ray Wang, as he talked about the role of AI in the modern workplace. And these aren't just pipe dream anymore, it's here and it can help you. The third way to be a shift winner is winners are proactive. We don't want just to sit there answering support tickets day in, day out, fighting fires. And that's, that's the old world we lived in. I mean, I don't know about you, I don't miss Patch Tuesdays. <laughs> this new world, I get to be proactive and doing more and helping and enabling our business. You know, it's not just about technology. You see, shift winners are forward thinking and they know that digital transformation is not just about going to the cloud or using mobile or having AI, but it's more about how do we 
streamline and transform our organization to do better. You know, you'll hear from the city of Richmond, Virginia. They're just two hours away. Uh, we have good friends from there. We have a, 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 a team down there. We have an office there. But the city of Richmond is maximizing the power of the cloud to better serve their citizens. And it's not only about reporting things like, oh, I've got a pothole here, I'm gonna report. I mean, you can do that. But now they're streamlining their city that a lot of other agencies are using it to better serve their constituents, which in effect improve processes and also improve delivery of services to their citizens. you also hear later today from our good friends from Prudential Financial. They're a large financial institution, and they're gonna talk about how from being ad hoc in serving their business to being more proactive and thinking strategically on how to enforce and automate policies in Office 365. So instead of getting tickets around, oh, I missed the permissions, oh, I don't know where my sites is, they don't have to deal with that anymore. So those are really good and compelling lessons to learn from. The next way to be a ship winner is our job is to empower people. And we got to get rid of the old thinking of controlling. I mean, a lot of shift losers, the first question they always ask, and I see this as organizations move to a new environment, how do I turn this off? All right? Question, how many of you have Microsoft Teams enabled in your organization? Phenomenal. So how many of you that have it enabled have self-service creation enabled? All right, good. Now for those of you that didn't raise your hands, if you have Microsoft Teams turned off, you have a shadow IT problem, talk to me after. I'll help you with that. Uh, we'll hear from our good friends from Merck Pharmaceutical as they talk about how they've enabled Teams, but more importantly, how they've made it easy for people to do the right thing. You know, it's, it's when I talk to customers, I talk about, look, the answer is not controlling. The answer is empowered governance. How, how can you put guardrails so that people do the right thing and not worry about bad things happening? So that's what we want to focus on and also help you understand. You also hear from uh, my friend Tony Redmond as he talks about Microsoft's velocity of changes in Office 365. He's an expert in this, since pretty much he wrote the book on Office 365 for IT pros. So make sure you reach out to him as you see him this week, talk to him, and he'll share a lot of good learnings and insights as well. The last point I wanna make, if you wanna be a shift winner, you see this shift, we like it or not, is a journey. It's not a destination. You know, oftentimes, especially as IT, we think of technology changes as a destination. Oh, the three years is up, we need to upgrade. Once we upgrade, I'll see you in three years, don't talk to me anymore. That's not true anymore. You see, with, with this mindset, I'm seeing a lot of people slowly changing, but to me, it's not quite authentic. You know, there, there's a lot of people that used to think cloud is not good, but now suddenly they changed their mind and suddenly said, okay, I'm in. I call these people cloud chameleons. You know, these are the people who, who resisted in the past and suddenly jumped to this bandwagon, but the way they approach it is still very traditional. Oh, okay, we, we upgraded to Office 365. Monday, we're gonna go live. Go have a good life, don't talk to me again. But we know that doesn't work, right? To do it well, to do it right, it's a journey. How do you plan for change management? How do you think about data retention? What about if you're a global organization, how do you handle GDPR? Do you have to take care of data sovereignty? If you're in the US government, FDA Part 11, are you fulfilling NARA requirements for the upcoming records management regulation? That's in December. Shift winners, on the other hand, realize that it's not about the destination, but it's about the journey. Speaking of NARA, who's here with us today, they're a great example of an organization not only looking forward, but more importantly, providing guidance 
to agencies that's moving towards this journey. So if you're a U.S. government agency that uh, have to subscribe to the NARA compliance, make sure you check out that session. We'll also hear from Microsoft Core Services Engineering. They're essentially the internal IT of Microsoft, and they'll talk about their journey on how they upgraded their internal 200,000 employees to Microsoft Teams from Skype. So you'll see Pune this week, and make sure you say hi to her. And boy, such a great and amazing story on how they moved their organization to Teams. You know, the final point I want to leave you before I turn it over to uh, Mario and Tony is that those who come out of this shift stronger essentially are those that are agile, those that are passionate, and those that are work as a team. You know, at AppPoint, we embrace these three core values and we live by this. So I hope in these two days, you seize this amazing opportunities, get to engage with people in this intimate setting. We have great thinkers here, well-experienced experts, and I truly, truly urge you to keep an open mind and don't be a know-it-all. I urge you to be a learn-it-all. I'm here to learn as well as you are here to learn. And in fact, one thing I would encourage you is on your phone, if you don't have the LinkedIn app, download it, and every person you talk to, connect with them on LinkedIn. While these two days are certainly valuable for everyone, the lasting connection you make out of these two days is far more important. So again, thank you for coming to Shift Happens, and I look forward to learning with you.